If you're like me, you've been collecting these old window panes. The lengths that I have gone to to retrieve these things, jumping in dumpsters, stopping on the side of the road and finding room in my trunk. I've been collecting these window panes for about 10 years in the hopes of making those really kind of trendy images you find on Pinterest and Instagram of greenhouses. Uh, but for years, they sit in a shed or at my parents' house, taking up room. So I decided to do a project with them. I'm still saving a lot of the window panes, uh, most of which are broken. And the reason I'm doing that is I want to do an epoxy kind of project with sticking feathers and flowers and objects in the broken panels and using epoxy and playing and, and doing it with that. But the ones that are intact, I came up with a different project with, and that's what I'm going to share today. After I did my first panel, I decided to commit to the project and had to hire an electrician. I bought recessed one foot by four feet dimmable lighting. It's usually used for office space, but I had to use two by fours to put it in place. It worked really cool but there was some pros and cons with doing this. One being the dimmable might not have been worth it and it was a lot more expensive to do the wiring. Also, I probably should have bought it directly from my electrician as opposed to Amazon because there was a lot of issues with the panels I bought and the compatibilities with the dimmer, so I actually spent much more money. I started this project in the winter which was probably a big mistake because I needed to spray paint outside and the snow really affected the project in a negative way when it touched the panels, creating bubbles and defects in the glass, which was cool to a degree, but it got too much on some of the panels and it became unusable. I used a mirror spray paint that I picked up at Home Depot. There are a number of brands and I used most of them and I didn't really see a difference and I do not think it matters with this project because it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, that said, I use silver and I also use gold. I spray painted the panels doing a few coats. Since I'm going for a stained glass look, I don't think that it really matters about being accurate and perfect. You know, if there's some spots that are less mirrory and pick up more of the stained glass spray paint above, I think that works just as well. I then let it dry before going over for the second coat. Here's what it looks like while it's drying. See, it gives this reflective, I wouldn't say mirror look, but it gets close to mirror. And the more you spray paint with the mirror spray paint, the more mirror-like it gets, but it doesn't get like a modern, clear, crisp mirror, more like a vintage mirror, which is perfect for what we're going for. I then go over it with the gold spray paint. The gold is a little harder to find, and I had to go to Amazon, which was a lot more expensive. I did much less gold because of that. I then went over with stained glass or glass spray paint. I chose blue, green, and purple. Starting off with a base of blue, I just really filled the panels with the blue. And in, I kind of regret not having an orange or like a copper orange that they also sell because I think it would have balanced out the colors.
I then filled with purple, just filling the s sections and mixing it. And I kind of like the mix look. So as I go, I sometimes I tilt the, the panel one way and another and just let it kind of mix and melt together. I like that look. Um, so I don't let it dry between, uh, I let it dry between the mirror and the glass spray paint, but I do not let it dry between the colors because I like that mixed look. I feel that stained glass has that iridescent mixed look of colors, but I think everyone's taste could be different. So it's just a trial and error and experimental.
With this whole project, uh, there was a lot of problems due to COVID-19, quarantining and economic situation around that I had to order from Amazon where a lot of the product usually was available in my local Home Depot and ordering from Amazon was a huge problem. Things came broken. There was definitely, uh, definitely things were much more expensive on Amazon and people were taking advantage of the situation. So because of this, I was delayed quite some time and it was just a lot of wait and for the right product. I used chalk paint to paint the actual frame, uh, like a cobalt blue chalk paint, but you could probably use any kind of color for this project. I don't think it, whatever, whatever you want to paint, you could do a high gloss or whatever you think. But for me, I use chalk paint, which has been quite trendy as of lately. I use a razor blade to clean the mirror side um, of the pane the side to be showing. So the side I didn't spray paint, I painted. And that's the shot side that I'd be showing. The, the side that I spray painted the is the back. The front I painted and I'm cleaning the actual glass, not the spray paint, but the glass and removing the extra paint from the chalk paint that was added on it. So with a um, screws, I screwed in the panels with um, trim screws so you didn't really see much of the screw. And again, I didn't use the, I, didn't, I screwed it in the side um, facing bottom, which was not spray paint. So it's just the glass. Hello and welcome. So I'm finally done with the first part of this project. Um, the reason <laughs> it's, it's two projects essentially is because, I don't know if you guys can see, but the, the windows are not matching up perfectly. I used a bunch of upcycled windows and it was very hard to get them to fit perfectly together. I don't know how people do. <laughs> I mean, I see a lot of these are like beautiful greenhouses where they're upcycling the windows and there's just a lot of just space and cracks. And I think this is more apparent because of the lights. Now I could um, do a standard trim, but I'm not a standard girl. So I decided to Dremel a, a sort of wooden motif uh, and I still can't decide if I want Southeast Asian um, motif of peacocks and jungly themes uh, inspired by my trips to Southeast Asia and seeing Angkor Wat and Bogan and Thailand. Or I really love Art Nouveau. I mean, Art Nouveau is so beautiful. And I, I think there's just not a lot of Art Nouveau art. So I'm kind of leaning towards that actually. But if you have an opinion, oh, feel free to let me know um, which one to do. I'm still on the fence. So back to this project, I had some questions on TikTok. And one of them, I got a couple of questions asking about is same side spray paint or do you alternate? Everything's done on one side. Uh, actually, the side that you're spray painting looks really dull and 
not so great. So you wanna use the side that you're not spray painting as the side that you're showing. And the light, when it shines through, gives that effect, especially with the mirror paint. And back to another question, the second question is, do you mix the mirror paints, the gold and the silver? Now, I don't think that really matters so much because it's transparent. You need a lot of layers to not make it so transparent. And I sometimes mix, sometimes didn't mix, and I didn't really find it made much of an impact. Um, that said, I, didn't, I did one layer and then another layer. Sometimes I let it dry, sometimes I didn't let it dry. It didn't seem to matter. That said, I did let it dry before the, um, the um, stained glass spray paint. Uh, so, and I think to create like a watery stained glass effect, you kind of want this mixture. You don't really, I mean, you could go with whatever effect you want, but for me, I was kind of wanted to mix a bit to make a, um, a stained glass. Actually, I wanted carnival glass. Uh, one of the things is it does, for me, for my taste, it's a little too bright. I should have um, used some, um, like they had this like kind of orangey color and that would have, I think, balanced out the colors a bit and made it more muted. So now it's, it's very, it's actually, I have a, a painting over here of a fish and a peacock. And to me, it's more fishy than peacock, which it's still pretty cool for me. Now there's a, a couple of things that went wrong and I guess I'll go over that now. So maybe I'll bring the camera over to show you. So sometimes there was bubbles. I unfortunately did this project in the winter and sometimes it started snowing. Uh, so, and I had to like get it out, but I didn't get it out in time. So this one's really bubbly. So that was probably from snowfall. Another thing is the edges sometimes didn't get painted. And this was because of a few things. Um, one, Windex. And two, the, um, the uh, sealant around the edges was just not letting the paint go through all the way, but the light kind of goes through. So I was using Windex to clean the panels and I kind of stopped because it was doing that. And I just started using water. And you could see that sometimes I use more paint than others. There wasn't a perfect science to it and I probably should have been a little more careful, but I find that like old stained glass, it's never uniform. It's always very different. Another thing is the lights only come, the lights underneath, you don't see it, only they stop here. And there's another two feet of no lights, but paneling. And I should have not done that actually. It does not look so great when the light is on. That said, I'm thinking of putting a chandelier in the center and that will, create kind of a more blotchy effect with this because if I put a chandelier there, the light from the chandelier will cast a, almost like a shadow and it will kind of turn on the, I, I mean, it wouldn't be, I don't wanna say the word turn on, but activate maybe the um, layer of mirror. So if you shine a flashlight on this, it would reflect, it, what it essentially is doing is reflecting the mirror spray paint. So that's what you see. So it would be like kind of a cool effect with light. So I'm kind of curious and willing, really excited to do that. Um, so we have a dimmer on this and I don't think it's really worth a dimmer. That's it dimmed. Uh, that's kind of cool. But the dimmer we use was, whew, it was probably another $500 with everything included to put in a dimmer. So this is dimmed not dimmed, so completely lit. And this is completely dimmed, and this is off. Now, I kind of prefer off. I mean, it's cool to turn on the light and get like this beautiful 
stained glass effect, but this is more uniform. And to me, for me, it's more elegant. It's, I think it's gonna be really elegant when everything is connected by the, um, the motif, the Dremel woodwork I'm gonna do. So I'm really excited for that because to me right now, it just looks very incomplete. And of course, this section between drywall and uh, sheetrock is the most irritating. The backstory of why we um, uh, the project started was because we put we lofted out this, and I could have sheetrocked it or done something different. So I chose something different. So basically, this is the old um, sheetrock and where it wasn't lo lofted. And this is where it's lofted to make a room essentially up there. Before, it just was a balcony to the second floor. So I hope.